Hey everyone, Michael back with another video. In this video, I'm going to show you a technique for removing records from a SharePoint list using Power Apps. If you enjoy Power Apps, Power Automate, SharePoint, Teams, and Power BI videos, feel free to subscribe because I'll be putting out more videos in those areas. And now for my intro. All right, so I'm going to show you guys a different technique for removing records from a SharePoint list, and that is because when you remove records in Power Apps using the remove function, it's going to remove this record here and put it in the recycle bin in your SharePoint. And if you're like me, I have a lot of files in my SharePoint recycle bin. Uh, it's hard to navigate through it. So I don't like storing stuff in there. And after 93 days, those items are gonna be removed from your recycling bin. And let's say a user goes in and accidentally deletes records, they forget about it. And then and when you're doing your quarterly reports, you're like, you know, some of my records are missing, what happened? And you go to the recycling bin, it could be gone, or you have to do some like data mining. I just have a cleaner way of removing records that's pretty, a little bit safer. So I'm going to show you that. So first I'll go ahead and show you how to remove records from your SharePoint list using a Power Apps function. And then I'm going to show you uh, my method I like to use that I feel is a lot safer if you're giving access for your users to remove records. I usually only have like a short admin list able to remove records. I'll make another video showing you guys how you can make an admin list in SharePoint and correlate it to Power Apps so they have some users have elevated rights. In my, sh in my Power App, I have a simple gallery that is linking to my employee data SharePoint list. I just have all the records right here. Let me go ahead and re uh, refresh this so we get all the records. I added like one or two. So now we have Allie back in my SharePoint list. Uh, you can ignore the favorite fruit. That's just a column of data. We just want to look at the uh, first name, last name, and the pretty much just this record. And uh, we just have a little patch function here. We don't really need it, but we are going to copy this component. So I can have another one to place my remove records. So you wanna copy that, copy that in my gallery right here. And now we have two buttons. So let's go ahead and change the text on this one. So let's say I wanna give users the ability to remove records. Let me go ahead and change this on select right here. So to remove this record from my gallery, it's going to be remove, and then it's going to be your SharePoint list. So mine is play data. And then we just want to do this item because it's going to refer to the item which you select in your gallery. So in this case, if I click on this, let me just change the color. And uh, just a quick tip, if you guys want a quick tip for your buttons. So I changed the color on this one uh, to red. You know, all the components change, but when a user hovers over it, it's still going to maintain that original color so just to change it really quick because i know uh, you're going to want to change this anyways you want to go to the hover fill uh, it should have a color fade uh, formula already in there you want to take out the rgba formula and just do self.fill and now when you hover over it it's going to do the main color minus 20 percent so it's going to be a little bit darker so let's go ahead and remove this record alley so I removed it, uh, my gallery updated. I'm gonna go to my SharePoint list. And as you can see, Allie's no longer in here. And if I was just uh, the admin for the SharePoint list, I'd be looking for Allie and being like, oh, the record was probably removed. And here is Allie in the original location, the date deleted. I have a ton of records here because I was emptying a bunch of SharePoint lists. So it's just hard to look and see where the record went. So let me go ahead and add her back into the SharePoint list. We're using the restore, go to my employee data. And so I just wanna add a column here to my SharePoint list. Let's go ahead and add a choice. So I wanna do record status, we'll call it, because I wanna use a choice to determine if this record is an active record. Let me remove the space at the end and we'll just do two choices, active and deleted. And remove choice number three. And we'll go ahead and save this. Okay, so now I have a record status. So let me go ahead and make all these records active. 
Uh, I don't know why it's not letting me edit this in grid view. So let me go ahead and just quickly make all these records active. Okay, so I've made all my record statuses active. Uh, if you have a large SharePoint list, you don't want to do it by hand. Uh, if you had the edit in grid view, you can do that, then just drag them all the way down. But I would recommend making a Power Automate flow that um, updates all your records to active. You can do it just by using a get items. You're going to get all the items in your list, and then you're going to do an update, and you're going to set the record status to active. It's going to put that in a do all statement. Then you just run it, it'll update all the records so they're active. So now that I have this column right here, we're gonna to wanna to go ahead and go into my Power App and just refresh my employee data. Okay, so now in our gallery, we are showing all the employee data. So every record is being shown. And since we add that column, we only wanna show active records. So let's go ahead and add a filter on our gallery. So my gallery was previously showing all the records from the employee data. We're going to do a filter and we are going to do record status. And we want this, we want record status dot value since it is a choice field. We want this equal to active. Close that statement up with double quotes. And now we're only seeing the active records in my SharePoint list. And since all the records are active, let's go ahead and actually uh, adjust our remove button right here. So we're gonna go to the on select property and we're going to comment out the previous remove function and we're just going to patch this instead. We're gonna patch employee data and then we're going to do this item I think this item will work. If not, we will do a lookup. But I believe we can do use list item in our patch. So we wanna patch this item in our gallery and we just wanna update the record status value. And to update a choice field, you actually have to do a, um, a curly bracket value and then you want to do whatever value you want to put into that record. So I want to do delete it. And then we want to close up this statement. So basically I am setting this record to delete its status in my choice field. And my gallery is only showing the records that are active. So if I go ahead and remove Allie, we can see that her record isn't showing in our gallery anymore. It was removed, but if I go back to my SharePoint list, we still have this record here. And so if I just filter by all the active records, I can see which ones are active. And if I wanna see all the deleted records, I can go ahead and do that. And let's say a user reaches out in three, four months saying, hey, uh, we had some records deleted and we wanna restore this. Can you do that? You can go ahead and change the record status right here back to active, where you can make it in your Power App to where the admins can see the deleted records. So I think it's a pretty nice way of doing it. It doesn't really take up a lot of rows in your SharePoint list. You can have up to a ton of rows, so it's not really a concern with um, data. If you're generating reports, you can just uh, filter out the uh, record status equals deleted. So I hope you guys learned a little something about deleting records in SharePoint. Uh, this is just my technique. If you're fine with the remove, you can go ahead and use that. But I think long-term, this solution is a lot better uh, for data security and other data purposes. So if you enjoyed this, give it a thumbs up, leave me a comment if you don't like this method. If you like it, go ahead and leave a comment, uh, subscribe if you want, and I hope to catch you in another video.